It's my take. While we've been focused on the results of special elections, the ups and downs of the Russia investigation, and President Trump's latest tweets, under the radar, a broad and significant shift in American foreign policy appears to be underway. Put simply, the U.S. is stumbling its way into another decade of war in the greater Middle East. Donald Trump came into office with a refreshing skepticism about America's policy toward the region. Everybody that's touched the Middle East, they've gotten bogged down. But Trump also sees himself as a tough guy. I would bomb the shit out of him. Now that he's in the White House and has surrounded himself with an array of generals, his macho instinct seems to have triumphed. The administration has ramped up its military operations across the greater Middle East. But what is the underlying strategy? In the fight against ISIS, U.S. forces have been aggressively initiating attacks, resulting in sharp rises in civilian deaths in Iraq and Syria. And in a dramatic escalation this week, the U.S. shot down a Syrian warplane, putting Washington on a collision course with Syria and its ally, Russia. Worse yet, it is unclear how this belligerence toward the Assad regime will achieve the sole stated mission of America's involvement in Syria, to defeat ISIS. Logically, if Assad gets weaker, his main opposition forces, various militant Islamist groups, including ISIS, will get stronger. Compounding the incoherence, the administration explained that while it had attacked Assad's forces, it was not fighting the Assad regime. And the downing was simply an act of collective self-defense. A few more such acts of self-defense, and American combat troops could find themselves on the ground in the middle of the Syrian civil war. In Afghanistan, Trump has delegated the details of a mini-surge of 4,000 more troops to Defense Secretary James Mattis and other senior military leaders. Now, let's remember, the United States has been in Afghanistan for 16 years. It has had several surges in troop numbers, it has spent almost a trillion dollars on that country. And yet, Mattis acknowledges that the U.S. is not winning. What will an additional 4,000 troops achieve that over 100,000 troops could not? In Yemen, with Washington's latest arms sales to Saudi Arabia, the U.S. is further fueling the Saudis' proxy war against Iran, a war that has led the kingdom into a de facto alliance with al-Qaeda in Yemen. The new Saudi crown prince, Mohammed bin Salman, seems likely to persist in this conflict, even though it has resulted in a humanitarian catastrophe. A child in Yemen is dying from preventable causes every 10 minutes, according to UNICEF, and the poorest country in the Arab world has been turned into a wasteland in which terror groups will compete for decades to come. In almost every situation American forces are involved in, the solutions are more political than military. Everything military has been tried. This has become especially true in places like Syria and Afghanistan, where many regional powers have major interests. Military force without a strategy and a deeply engaged political and diplomatic process is destined to fail, perhaps even to produce a series of unintended consequences. Think about the last decade and a half. During the campaign, Donald Trump seemed to be genuinely reflective about America's role in the Middle East. This is not usually me talking, yeah. okay, because I'm very proactive, right. as you probably know. I know. But, but I would sit back and let's see what's going on. Yes. After 16 years of continuous warfare, hundreds of thousands dead, trillions of dollars spent, and greater regional instability, somebody in Washington needs to ask, before the next bombing, before the next deployment, what is going on?